What is it? How can I help you? What? You want to know more about Prominence 2? You came to the right place. Hi, guys. Django here, trapped in this menu screen, apparently. Thanks for joining me on a first look at the Prominence 2 mod pack. My goal of these first look videos is to help you understand what's in this pack and whether you want to play it. There's some pretty cool stuff in here. You in? All right, let's go. Okay, here we are. Brand new world. Let's get our bearings. We've got a sword, some bread, a quest book. Let's punch a tree and talk about what we've got going on here. First of all, there's shaders in this pack, as you can see. I'm using Complementary Reimagined, which comes built in. There's a couple others. You should check them out. Complementary Reimagined is my favorite. There's a quest book. Let's take a look at the quest book. We're pretty early in this pack, and having looked through the mod list, there's a lot of mods missing. But we've got some notable ones here, Ad Astra, Applied Energistics 2, Power, Industrial Revolution. But there's many, many more. And there's a bunch of nethers to explore. Nethers. And there's a bunch of dimensions to explore. Ad Astra takes us into outer space, which is how we get to all these things. But check this out. Here's what I'm excited about. Right here, there's a storyline. Click on this thing. There's a creator named Skellac. And they maintain balance through all the dimensions and has fought countless battles to keep the world going. But they're getting weak. Let's get this reward here. I'm get some fried rice. A new threat. But they're getting weak from all these battles and need our help. Of course. There's a world-ending force called the Void who's planning an invasion of all the dimensions. They're corrupting what were once peaceful creatures and turning them into deadly foes. Chapter 1. So the Void has corrupted peaceful creatures and we need to defeat them to save the world. And here we go. So there are a number of quests that take us through the different dimensions. First, a lich, which was once the protective king of Chorbia in the overworld. We got to defeat the night lich. And then we have to defeat the gauntlet, who was once a peaceful watcher of the nether. And then the end dragon, whose name was apparently Jane. And then it goes on into different dimensions, mostly the end, the overworld. And back to the nether again. The prison, we'll see this later. This is Mind Cells mod. And then finally, kill the Void Shadow in what I assume is in the Void Dimension, which is, I think, from the Adventure Z mod. I love a story that ties all the dimensions together. This sounds amazing. The mod pack devs have promised new content every month. So this looks very cool. Of course, we should look at the advancements. There's a bunch of mods in here and more will appear as we progress and, and kind of trigger the initial um, advancement screens for different mods, but we got better and better nether, regions unexplored, things, mythic mobs, all the young stuff I think is in here. Farmer's Delight. So there's all kinds of tech mods, magic mods in here, countless structures and all kinds of mobs. Check this out. Okay, I want you to stick around, so let me tell you what to expect from here. In order to get going on the tech mods, we'll need a base and lots of resources. There are many mods in here that'll make mining easier and help us get more out of our efforts with ore doubling and other automation. That means I've got hours of exploration and resource gathering to do, and I'll distill that down to like the next 10 minutes or so, where you can get a good feel for what this pack is all about, what it has for exploration. And after that, I'll show you some of the tech setups because I love me some tech mods. And finally, I'll give you my own hot take of sorts on this mod pack. Got these guys, are you friendly? Looks like they are. These are drakes. I don't know, maybe we can tame these guys. That'd be pretty cool to have as a pet. There's a chest under here. Let's grab these and see what we got later. Well, I don't think it's better than a stone sword. We'll take it. Speaking of swords, it's, this has better combat in it, which we take a look at our third person view here. Pretty neat. All right, these guys here on the houseboat. Got a couple friends here. It's Brittany, Alethea. More chests. We don't. We don't need tropical fish. Oh, we've got a couple of fishing rods here. Luck of the Z one, two. All right, thanks guys for the fish. All right, bye guys. Uh, oh no. It is getting dark. We need to go get a bed quick. All right, here's a the sheep. There's some more sheep down there. Okay, 
This should be okay. All right, we only have two white wool. We need one more. It's your lucky day, guys. Yikes. All right, I see some sheep, AKA a bed. Oh boy, skeleton creeper. Oh, what happened? Oh, I need some wood. Okay, it's a creeper. Crafting table. And can we make sleeping bags? We can. This has the comforts mod in it and we can make a sleeping bag, which means we can sleep anywhere without setting our spawn point. Let's make a quick ax. We get whole tree cutting with an ax. So that's kind of OP. It does use up, yeah, it uses up the entire axe's durability though. So it's not that OP. Let's continue south. Look at this world gen over here. This is really neat. Ducks. All right, and some, some stone. It's a thunderstorm. What was that? <laughs> what is that sound? Okay, this lignite coal ore from modern industrialization. Let's see if we can make some torches with this. Yes, we can. Hoping for some iron. There's none. Sleep through this thunderstorm. We've got some surface iron and some regular coal. Burr glass ore. I can't break that without iron. Let's continue on. What is this right here? Oh no. Uh oh. What is he throwing? What is this thing? Throwing explosions. Prisoner's quarters. Oh, this is from the mine cells mod. Looks ominous. You know what? Let's make a bed and set a spawn point because of course we have to explore this. Okay, we've got a bed, we've set our spawn point. We're cooking some mutton. Okay, let's go in. Wow, this is really cool. Just grab everything, sort it out later. Look at the map. That is, there's a lot to explore in here. Okay, so you see that orange, these orange boxes that are floating around those are mobs that are going to appear. Let's see. Yep. All right, we're going to see what happens when you die. So we've got a compass. Points to our grave. Let's see what our grave looks like. Okay, here it is. I think we just break it. Yeah, okay. We got all our stuff back. Leap, leaping zombie. Whoa, there's two of us. Hoping for a new weapon here. A nutcracker. Okay, let's continue looting this place. Crowbar deals critical damage after breaking a door. Broadsword. Nice. Hey, first diamond. A rare ember blade. Shoots a fireball. Nice. An epic Hattori's katana. This place is loaded. Whoa. Oh, we got his monster's eye. Can eat this thing. Look at all that. Okay, I just got a new skill point. Press K to open the skill tree. And we can use we can use this point somewhere. Movement speed, maximum health. Let's okay, so I use this point here, and I guess this is like down the health tree. Plus 10% maximum health. Gotta get behind this guy. Let's head out. We've got full inventory. Check out this sword. Now that we've got some iron, we can make a forge hammer, which is the first way to double some ores. If we had actual iron ore, we could put it right here and double it. And with the hammer, we could triple it. And to get ore, uh, we can use a drill. There's lots of different drills in here. But this steam mining drill from modern industrialization is pretty easy to make. I've got diamonds from, from the prisoner's quarters. Uh, we just make, need to make some of these iron plates, which is hammer. 
this hammer is easier to make than that other hammer. So let's make, and with this, we can make four iron plates. And with these four iron plates, we can make a iron large plate. We need two of those. There we go. Furnaces, buckets, easy, and copper drill head. So we need to make all these things. Copper gears, tons of copper. So we need to go find a ton of copper. What? There's that guy again. Sounds like a Looney Tunes character. It is a Looney Tunes. What is... <laughs> what even was that thing? It was a rabbit. We need a ton of copper. So I'm going to head off and mine a bunch of copper. What even are these guys? Can they climb waterfalls? Oh, they can. Uh oh. I'm going to take that grindstone. Pelicans. Well, I guess I'm a grave digger now. Where's this thing? Oh, take it on. Let's do it. Oh, jeez. Maybe not. Here is a an Ad Astra meteorite. There's two meteorites in this game. One for Applied Energistics, one for Ad Astra. I did use up some diamonds that I got from the prisoner's quarters on a pickaxe. This is good, so we can get some obsidian and go to the end. In the middle of this thing, it could be a chest or something. Here it is. Even if you're not going to start in on Ad Astra, definitely worth digging into one of these meteorites. What is this treat? I need to go check that out. That's a guy hanging there. Oh. That's awful. Got some villagers down here. Let's see what they've got going on. Sneak up on this guy. Hello. Okay, it's a little illager camp. Before we loot that, that's that it? Oh, oh, indicator. Ah! Oh. Okay. I do have some more skill points to use up here. I think let's use them on movement speed, huh? Oh, I can't. Oh, I need to. Oh, I chose. Apparently, I chose the health route. So I have to use. I can't use them on these. So I'm going to use them. Okay. I've got a lot of points. One more left. Oh, maybe I can work my way over to here. Yes, that's how you get these other ones. So initially you choose, and then you got to make your way around from there. All right, I see some structures up ahead on the map. Let's see what this is. What is that? Um, what? Is this thing dangerous? Uh, 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 uh. What is he doing? Is he looking for me to pet him? Or is he just going to light me up? Oh, okay. He hit me. All right, well... I don't know. It still seems like maybe he's tameable. Up in the sky is a floating village of sorts. I think I want to get up there. Let's see. Can we feed this guy raw meat? No, nope, no, nope, he's just not friendly. Okay, let's head up. Hopefully that dragon doesn't want to protect that village up there. Okay, this is pretty far up. took all the blocks that I had, including my crafting table. Let's hope it's worth it. We seem to have broken into somebody's house. Oh, I hear a villager. Okay. Hello, guys. Merlin. Marlin. All right, well, this is some sort of sky village. I really just want to find an anvil. This is some sort of throne room. Automaton. I think this replaces golems. Flying mount from Mythic Mobs. I forget what that's called. It's just regular village stuff, though. Oh, a gray toy shark. Of course, we have to take that. Okay, now we're finding some stuff. A saddle. Feral claws, which... Where'd they go? Right into the slot? It disappeared. Well, that stinks. Don't want to mess with that guy. Oh, an anvil. This is what we were looking for. 
Oh, that was a good get right there. All right, let's get out of here. Okay, back down from whence we came. <laughs> Crafting table and obsidian. This is just going to take forever. All right, it would definitely have been faster <laughs> to break all the dirt, go get more, fight the dragon, build ladders, than breaking this obsidian going down. I do have regrets. Okay, we got through the obsidian. Oh, and wood with no axe. Another good move. We made it to the dirt. It was all worth it for an anvil because we have a million enchanting books from the prisoner's quarters. What is this thing? Are we going to get a mob coming out of this? I think it must want me to put something on it. Oh, I can craft in it? I don't really have anything useful for crafting here. I wonder what I can put in the ossuary. We'll have to find out later. All right, here is another meteorite, and this one is from Applied Energistics 2. Another good thing about meteorites is sometimes it gives you, exposes a bunch of iron. I think I see some down here. Yes. Uh, iron. Okay, let's break into this meteorite. In the middle of this should be some Certus Quartz. Let's kind of clear this out a little bit, and let's talk about Applied Energistics 2 and what to do when you find one of these meteorites. Okay, so here we have this Certus Quartz block. We can just break this and get some Certus Quartz. These budding ones grow Certus Quartz buds on them. And and this mysterious cube has inscriber presses, calculation press, silicon press, engineering press, and logic press. And these are the four presses you need to get started in Applied Energistics 2. So Applied Energistics 2 is a full kind of storage and auto crafting system. One of my favorite mods. Let's see. And finally, if we break one of these full Certus Quartz blocks, we get a Certus Quartz block. So you can't break these budding blocks or they'll just become, I think, regular Certus Quartz. So we have to figure out there might be a way to move them or we're just going to have to come back here to get the, to grow some Certus Quartz. Let's head back to the base. And we're back at the base. As you can see, I did some work around here off camera. I decided to settle here since prisoners' quarters are here and there's so much more to explore in there. There's actually a whole dimension in there loaded with loot that I found. I won't spoil it for you though. And I've got this unfinished house. I guess I guess that makes me the prison warden. I made a path to the water where I want to make a fishing dock. I do need to go find some spruce for accents, get a bunch more stone, glass, and some decorations. And I plan to have that all finished by the end of the video. We're still horribly short on iron and copper, which I need before I can progress into a few of the tech mods that I want to show you, like modern industrialization. I really want to get that steam power drill so we can have three by three silk touch mining, which gives us much better ore production if we can start from the ores using this ore hammer right here. But in the meantime, let's enchant our current tools to bridge the gap for gathering resources. And we've got a bunch of spell books here. Efficiency three, unbreaking three. I'm not sure about vein mining. Let's put vein mining on a sapphire pickaxe just so we can see what that looks like. I've got the anvil right here. Let's just put this down. And we'll enchant pickaxe with unbreaking efficiency. It's getting expensive. And let's make a couple of, I need some, I need some sticks. I got this trophy for looting 100 chests. Oh, and we have a copper chest here. I didn't mention that either. You can craft a ch uh, an upgrade and it adds a row of row of inventory. Sapphire pickaxe and a sapphire axe. The durability on these things are pretty good. So let's put vein mining on this and on breaking. Let's go watch this vein mining work. All right. Does it work on stone? Oh, yes, it does. That just exposed a whole can of worms. All right. I'm here. I've spent many hours in the game. So I can get enough resources to show you some of the tech mods. I like to do this in survival, so I know that I'm not skipping some major grinding, like eating hundreds of copper ingots or a trip to the nether. While mining, I found a dungeon of sorts right here, loaded with loot. It's up here. 
loaded with loot, I was saying, and pillagers. So I doubled my diamonds. Back at the base, I finished up the house. Got myself some pet donkeys from the binary mod. Started a fishing dock, and we went into the nether. I didn't do much in the nether. I just needed some quartz. Interestingly, though, check this out. Oral in here is like in a nether dungeon. I don't know what mod adds this, but probably a young is better dungeon. This is just a zombie piglin spawner, so that could be worse. Pretty cool, though. That should come in handy as a an XP farm or a gold farm. But yeah, I explored in here just enough to get just enough to get some quartz. The quartz I needed for Tom's simple storage. And let's take a quick look at this. The inventory connector, you know, it's pretty pricey. You need a redstone comparator. And oh, while I was in the nether, I also traded with some piglins long enough to get the uh, get myself a couple of ender pearls. So I could make this connector and then the terminal. Also just need some stuff from the from the nether. For that, I actually upgraded it to a crafting terminal because I had a bunch of diamonds. And that's it. That's all you need for Tom's simple storage. You just put a con an inventory connector down. You are noisy. And it will show you the inventory in any adjacent chests and any chests that are connected to those. So all of these chests here are part of this inventory right here. If I just right click on here, you see it says 178 free and 577 slots. That's because it's treating all of these chests as inventory. And I right click on the crafting terminal. I have access to everything. How cool is that? Definitely a great early game start. Applied Energistics 2 will replace Tom's simple storage. And as you can see here in my hand, I've got a steam powered drill. So I went through all of the, if you recall earlier, this drill, this copper drill head right here required all of these gears and plates. These gears require bolts and rings and all these things um, are just, you know, a bunch of grinding. Just putting copper in this forge hammer and crafting all this stuff. But in the end, worth it. It needs some some sort of fuel. Just right click on there to put that inside it. And you right click on any kind of water source and it'll fill up with water. It gives you three by three mining and silk touch. And you can see I cleared out this, this whole thing. So if we just hit this thing right here, we get silk touch on all this stuff. Whoa. Then once you have silk touched ores, you can really start to double ores with the forge hammer and an iron hammer from modern industrialization. So without the hammer, you can get two coal crushed dust. With the hammer, you get three. So for tin, for example, we can get either tin dust or raw tin. So we get three raw tin for this one tin ore. We basically have ore quadrupling for tin. For copper, it's even more. So each different ores give you different uh, production levels with the forge hammer. So the forge hammer gets pretty tedious to use. So next I progressed into modern industrialization with steam power, which is right here. We just need to make a bronze boiler. We fill that with water, just like this. It holds up to eight buckets of water and some fuel. It's really efficient. It makes the steam and powers adjacent machines with steam. So now with this macerator, so iron ore, for example, and let's look at copper ore too. So if we put this one piece of copper ore in the macerator, it gives us eight raw copper, as opposed to one raw copper if we just mined that, right? And now we put the raw copper back in here, and it's for each of those eight, it's going to give us, I think, two and a half, one and a half. There we go. We got 11 this time. So for one copper ore, we got 11 copper dust, which we can then put in a furnace and get the 11 ingots. Likewise, for iron, one iron ore is going to give us three raw iron, 
And those three raw iron in the macerator are going to give us multiples as well. Might be like one and a half. Yeah, that time we got two, first time we got one. So we got four times on the iron ore by running that through here twice. So that is going to help us out quite a bit. Finally, we got this compressor, which if we take like this copper, we can turn copper into copper sheets, which is so much easier than dealing with those in the forge hammer. In fact, it would take two copper ingots to get a copper plate in here. Unless you put a hammer in here and then we get one for one, but it uses up this very expensive iron hammer to do it in the forge hammer, plus it's manual. So modern industrialization is definitely worthwhile to progress into. From here, there's industrial revolution, tech reborn. These tech mods have a lot of overlap. So you may want to just choose one to start with. Industrial revolution does have a lot of machines that automate things like farming, harvesting, tree cutting, and even fishing. Make a fisher, put that in the water, and that's going to do fishing fishing for you in exchange for power. So that's really useful. And don't forget, you can go into space with the Ad Astra mod. It's actually not that expensive. You just need steel and lots of it. So there you have it. All about Prominence 2. I'm going to give it a thumbs up for me. I enjoyed my early game playthrough, and I look forward to seeing how they add more to the storyline. And hey, I hope you found this useful. If you did, please like the video, subscribe to the channel for more modded Minecraft content, and leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Did you play this mod pack? I want to hear about it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. I appreciate you.